Thanks. Uh, speaking of uh, the middle school, that's uh, also was the site of the annual South Georgia Growing Vocal Conference, which we'll come to this year. Um, but speaking of agriculture, one interest in public transportation around here on my part, some other people, is on the one hand, if a bus route went as far as Moody, I might well ride it into town. Also, if a bus route went up Bemis Road to Moody, it would attract development over that way and out of the agricultural region where I live, which would be a big plus. I personally don't think we need to pay over to check the county. I would throw and need some agriculture. Um, I, speaking of buses, Live Oak started a bus system Monday. Live Oak, tiny little less than 7,000 Live Oak in a county half the size of Wilds. If you add up all the counties for the Suwannee Valley Transit Authority, the population is still a lot smaller than the Valdosta metro area. So why can they do it? We can't get a course called PLOPO. It's somewhere else. There seems to be no will to do this, which is surprising because the year authority did a study some years back which said the local businesses want public transportation so the employees can get to work. Um, there is right now a proposal by the, the, the LMPO to do a transportation study, two pieces, one about transit, public transit, one about trucking. And that study is almost completely funded except for one piece that was asked for from the Lowndes County Commission to the tune of less than $16,000. For whatever reason, they don't seem inclined to pay that. It occurs to me that another organization that has 16,000, maybe they'd like to chip in, we could say. And uh, considering that this is one of the organizations that recommended public transportation in the first place. Um, if I can put on my Walls hat briefly, Walls Watershed Coalition, still working on that with the Coochie River Water Trail, be happy to get a letter from you about that too if you like. Just you know, change Lapa River Water Trail to the with the Coochie and Little River Water Trail, that'd be great. And uh, Walls just, uh, Walls by the way is now a waterkeeper affiliate. The Waterkeeper Alliance is who determines territories for watershed organizations. And we also just asked them and they agreed to add the Upper Samwani to our territory. That means basically everything upstream from the confluence of the Gucci River. Which brings me to something I really wish I didn't have to talk about, but it's still an issue. The Florida Department of Environmental Protection announced last week that it is going to issue a permit to the Sable Trail Transmission LLC to use the sovereign wetlands of the state of Georgia to build their pipeline. Uh, the Hamilton County Commission is meeting tonight, and that's something they're going to be talking about. It's kind of a problem. Um, oh, by the way, it's a 14-day period to file any objections. A lot of time. In Albany, on the other side, the Albany City Council, the Doherty County Commission, and Representative Winfred Dukes all today filed letters with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission saying even more additional reasons they don't want that pipeline. Winfred Dukes pointed out in his letter that a big reason is nobody's going to want to come to live or bring a business to a community with a pipeline, or in their case also a compressor station. Um, I don't know if you follow the National Energy Board of Canada. Spectra Energy operates in British Columbia. And the National Energy Board of, Camera, Can of Canada, which is kind of like their FERC equivalent, has this year been fining Spectra over and over for negligence, corrosion, leaks at multiple facilities all across British Columbia. Last week they escalated. They didn't just fine them. They gave them a direct order. Fix this or we'll start shutting down your operations one by one. That's the company that wants to build this pipeline. It's the same company that was fined by the U.S. Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Agency in December 2012 for five different counts of negligence, corrosion, leaks, fires and explosions, and explicitly said not following federal law or their own company procedures. So it's 
kind of a problem, and if you felt like you know making a position about this, uh, you're for development, not for things that make development harder, which this pipeline would do. It's definitely not going to be made in Valdosta. The crews are going to come from Houston, and they'll claim they'll need enough tax revenue to offset this. They don't talk about the land valuations that will go down because of the pipeline on it. So if you want to act on this, this would be a very good time because FERC is about to issue the environmental assessment and after that it's a relatively short time until they decide on a permit. And if that permit gets issued, then FERC has federal eminent domain, which they can use without bothering to sue local landowners as they've done in Dorsey County, Mitchell County. Colquitt County, they sued a Georgia family centennial farm in Colquitt County. The local judge claimed for reasons that I don't understand that they could have Georgia eminent domain and go on her property to survey. People in Brooks County tell me that they're being targeted next, and which county would be after that? I think it might be Lyons County. If you've ever contemplated taking any action with any sort of resolution or talking to state or federal elected or appointed officials, this would be a very good time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corbin. Anyone else?